Speaking of thank yous, thank you to Jean Morel for helping us set up the event. And Molly, we will be reading or hearing read and perform at Flying Lion in a little bit. She lended this tripod and a camera. Thanks, Molly. Uh, and thank you all for being here. Um, so we have one more reader. Is that okay? All right, cool, cool. Um, and I'm, I have to ask, Freda, Freda, Jaffe. Jaffe? Okay, thank you. I always wondered, was it Jaffe or Jaffe? Freda Jaffe propagates dandelions and conjugates verbs in West Seattle, <laughs> as well as here in Southeast Seattle, and has been cited with a pair of binoculars in Columbia City. One of her poems travels daily through Bellevue with Metro's Poetry on Buses. Everybody welcome up, Fred. Thank you all for being here. It's kind of amazing. This is a full house. And thank you to the people who set this up. This is a great idea. And uh, it's very nice to be here. <clears throat> so I noticed that... Um, there's a picture, I don't know if it's a joke or not, but of Frank Sinatra, like, in jail at the sheriff's office, and that was kind of neat, because I, Frank Sinatra figures into my first piece here, which is called Unstable Fables. There's two of them. One, a mother lives in one of those retirement places that looks good, but are questionable. There are complaints. The daughter is called in. Mother, you must be careful, she warns. I will erase everything, including the state of California, threatens the mother. What about your grandchildren, cries the daughter. They have left the galaxy, parries the mother. Besides, everyone here sets their hair on fire. But mother, you have a closet the size of a bedroom. Yes, chides the mother. The closets are large, and on Tuesdays, the piano player mimics Frank Sinatra, off-key. Two, there was a long line at the post office that snaked around the corner and threatened to, to block the street. A woman strolled up to the front of the line. Hey, the cow jumped over the loon, someone pointed. That's putting the cart before the swan, another chimed. Someone called 911. There's a convention of hammerhead sharks, they bleated. Where's the reef, wondered a child. Quit your belly breaking, exploded the mail carrier. How many chickens does it take to mail a blankety blank sweater? At least two under favorable conditions. One to lay the egg, another to separate the fluff from the yolk. In keeping with the fable theme, the two sisters. A sister took her little sister's hand and said, our mother puts frozen vegetables, liver, and wonder bread on the table for supper, and we do not eat. I dreamed one of us married a man who asked, why didn't you run away? Come, let us go together out into the wide, wide world. The little one asked, but where will we go? The big one replied, in the old days, children lived in the woods, but there are no trees in Queens. We would not know if we would not know the woods even if we stumbled upon them. I have heard of a place called Central Park, far, far away. Let us go there. How will we find this place? asked the little one. Gather your belongings in your backpack, said the big big one. There must be a way. So the two sisters left the room with the two beds and the two windows, tiptoed out of the apartment and down the stairs heading into the wide, wide world. On their way, they met a dog who growled and bared his teeth. Goodbye, scary dog, they said. We are running away from home. That makes three of us, said Scary. We need a guard dog to protect you. Yes, yes, said the sisters at the same time. The sisters and Scary walked down the street. Soon they met a man who whispered, Happy pills, big boys, bikes, perks, kicker, we don't need happy pills, said the sisters. We are running away from home. You need protection from people like me. Take me along and you'll come to no harm. 
he promised. Okay, they said. Scary barked and off they went. Soon they passed a pizzeria. The smells were tantalizing. They looked at each other and went inside. Sal was behind the counter, tossing a round of dough high in the air. They watched as the dough flew up and landed back in his hands. We are running away from home with a scary dog and a drug dealer to protect us, they announced. <laughs> Sal took them aside and said in a low voice, you are wise to have a guard dog, but a drug dealer spells trouble. Why don't you stay here? You can work behind the counter. I have a room upstairs where you can both live. Oh, yes, yes, said the sisters at the same time. Okay, moving along here. Um, how much time do I have left? Is anyone count, who's watching the time? Okay. A few minutes. A few minutes, okay. So maybe I should go right to... Um, this is um, about extinction. Is, there, is that a short-tailed albatross around your neck? Upstairs on the second floor, in the room that was not quite a room, covered in smoky mirrors by the last tenant who refused to leave and had to be convinced, in the room that watched the blinds open and close, that listened as people downstairs argued, his voice raised, her voice next, his voice louder, her voice hoarse, coughing, his voice harsh, Juveniles are entirely dark brown at first, with a pink bill and pink feet. The disembodied sounds rising up the stairs, swirling through the entrance where I played on the floor with a three-inch black plastic stegosaurus, my first primer on extinction. <clears throat> Subadults have a black-throated stage with a white face, breast, and belly. He lived in a box with others of his kind, lined with pictures from magazines that were blue and green, a natural habitat. It had folded tissues for sleeping, bottle caps filled with water, and a bluish sky made out of Hanukkah wrapping paper. As the throat becomes white, a blackish area remains, creating a black hooded look. The people downstairs were my grandparents. Sometimes an ambulance arrived in the middle of the night and took my grandmother to the hospital. They turned off the sirens and kept the lights flashing at my mother's request. White patches appear on the upper side of the wing fairly early. I couldn't play stoop ball because it disturbed her. We had to be quiet. No one mentioned my grandmother was dying. By the late 1940s, they were close to extinction. Their feathers were coveted for pen plumes and feather beds. They did not know how to discuss death with children. They could barely discuss it themselves. They did not know or had forgotten that children think about everything all the time. I wondered where she went and if her hands still smelled of garlic. There are now 200 short-tailed albatross remaining on a tiny island south of Japan. Thank you.